Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I use Substance Designer to create this Kiri face material. I think it turned out really well and I learned a lot from this process. This isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial for beginners, but rather I wanted to share my thought process and high-level techniques to help others and hopefully get feedback on any possible improvements as well. There are many ways to create specific noise details and shapes in Designer, and in many cases I'm sure there will be more efficient ways of doing things. So that's why I wanted to focus more on the process and ideas rather than the specifics on how something is implemented, because there's many ways to do the same thing in Designer. With Substance Designer, I feel it's important to identify the major elements and details we want to create in our texture. This material can be roughly broken into three main parts, the flesh, core, and seeds. If you slice a kiwi in half, you will see many tiny seeds. Some are exposed right at the surface, some are buried just below the surface, and others are deep inside the kiwi, just barely visible. These seed details are necessary to create a realistic looking material. It's also important to notice that the kiwi flesh doesn't have a uniform texture. The green flesh texture is different as you approach the core, and the core, the white part in the middle, has a completely different texture. One thing that was interesting to do was to create a sense of depth, that the flesh is translucent, with visible seeds on top, and buried seeds and other veins below the surface at different depths. So let's get started. We're going to start with the base texture that the green parts of the kiwi have. This is a soft, fleshy, bumpy surface, and there's a pattern to the bumps, and to me the bumps have a bit of a cell-like pattern. So I basically took a cells too and blended it with the clouds and blurred it, and we see a nice fleshy texture, but it's a bit hard to see without some color. Many tutorials only work in grayscale and only add color as an afterthought, but I find with some materials I can't do this. I need to visualize the material with color while I add detail. So I started working with color right away. The flesh isn't a uniform color, but darker the further away you go from the core. So to create this, I started with a sphere and then I made it narrower. I then blended it in with some light green specks. It's not important to get results exactly like mine, but we're looking for a dark green on the outside with a light green middle broken out with some specks of light green. Anything similar will work. Once we connect it up, we can really start to see the beginnings of the kiwi flesh. Now I wanted to add even more interesting color patterns to the flesh. We see throughout the flesh large dark green blotches, so we're going to add those now. This was created by using another cells 2 node, but broken up by a Gaussian noise. This was used as a mask to add green blotches throughout our base color. To further create some more interesting textures, we're going to scatter some fibers throughout the flesh. This will also help create the illusion of a translucent surface and depth to the material. I used the cells too yet again, but broken up by a Gaussian noise. This was a mask for a light green color. When we look at the result, we can now see these tiny fiber strands scattered throughout our kiwi flesh. Kiwi flesh is translucent, and when you slice a kiwi in half, while the seeds at the surface are clearly visible, you can also see seeds that are underneath the surface. They show up as this black haze. You can barely make out the shape, but you know they're seeds. So to create this effect in our color map, I started by creating this pattern outside of Designer, just by copying and pasting seeds in a pattern based on the core. I then imported it into Designer, converted it to grayscale, and blurred it slightly. I then used this grayscale as a mask and blended it with a dark green color. This adds the fuzzy seeds to our color map. While this looks a bit odd right now, as we add more layers on top, the seeds will become more and more blurred and subtle. We can see from our reference image that kiwi seeds are placed along dark green grooves that protrude outwards from the core. This surface has a distinctly different texture and color from the green flesh. This is basically created by using a circular splatter node to splatter thin paraboloids warped and detailed by an anseotropic noise. I'm scrolling through the properties of the scatter node. You can pause the video if you want to copy my settings. After creating the seed crevice texture, I felt it needed more smaller details, basically by blending and blurring a cells 1 and clouds 2. The result is this wrinkly-like texture, which we will now use to add more color detail. We're going to add the crevice colors to our color map. Start by blending a light green and dark green together with blend mode copy using the small details we just created as a mask. This will create some dark green with light green highlights. 
use the crevice large form shapes as a mask when we blend back with the kiwi flesh to apply our kiwi pattern. Adjust the mask beforehand however, using a levels node to brighten the highlights and then blur slightly to remove the harshness. We can see from our reference image that the flesh near the core is dark green. So we have this olive green color and as a mask, we go all the way back to the output of this blur. Use the levels to adjust the strength. We want it to overlay on top of our buried seeds. Once everything's linked up, you should see the olive green blended onto our color map like this. We see vein-like structures protruding from the core. So to do this, we start with a gradient linear 3 and transform it into a line. We then use the splatter circular node to have it radiate from the center. Here are the settings for that node. Afterwards, we stretch and warp it with the purlin noise. Now, using the output of the warp, it's broken up with a Gaussian noise which is used as a mask to color the veins. After blending back with the color map, you should see something like this. At this point, I'm going to introduce a new helper node I created. It encapsulates all the messiness of creating various masks related to the core and seeds. Specifically, it has grayscale outputs for the core, seeds visible on the surface, partially buried seeds, and fully buried seeds. It also has a mask for something I call seed nodes, which are these small little nodes that appear to be the roots for the veins that reach out to the base of each seed. So the question is why I encapsulated it into its own node. Well, that's because it's quite messy. This is a seed pattern. I couldn't find a nice way of generating this pattern purely procedurally. That is, to scatter shapes following a specific path, but also allowing for some small variations. And having that specific path be purely procedurally generated as well. For example, the edge of a shape. I found some free and paid nodes that sort of did what I wanted, but I also didn't want to depend on paid nodes, especially since they didn't do all of what I needed. So I'll show you what I mean. So starting with the seeds themselves, I created the seed shape outside of Designer, imported it in, and converted it to a grayscale. I also blended it with a transform sphere to give it depth. There are many ways to do this. I then used a transform node to shrink it down to the proper size, and basically used a series of transform and blend nodes using blend mode add to manually place seeds in the specific place I wanted. I just added the shapes over and over and over, feeding in the previous result to the next blend. This is our output for the buried seeds. These are the seeds that are just below the surface, visible but have no effect on the surface. To create the seeds that poke up from the surface, starting from our blur, we transform it to the appropriate size. The edges are roughed up a bit with a slope blur grayscale and a dirt 4 node. From there, it's just a constant pattern of placing the seeds in the right position and then blending it like we did before. To add some variety, I used a linear 1 node and transformed it both horizontally and vertically, and then blended it with some of the seeds before the main blend. This adds this gradient to the seeds that partially bury them in interesting ways. Once this is all done, I got the following seed map. Note the gradients that some of the seeds have. There are many interesting ways to place the seeds. The more varieties, the more realistic the result will look. So I created some additional seed placements. These seeds will be placed just below the surface and impact the surface slightly, and others that will just peek out. The final output of the custom node is the seed nodes. To create them, they are basically created from a bunch of transformed shapes and blended together. They are pretty subtle, so levels was used to make the mask nearly transparent. They are then manually placed and blended together in a chain to create the seed node map. Let's talk about the core, this white part in the middle. It's really important to have the proper relationship and sizes between the core and seeds. If one is too large or too small, the whole face looks off. So while it's the eventual goal to generate noise-based shapes, for the first one you do, I recommend tracing an existing Kiri's core. This ensures that the core and the seeds are scaled appropriately. For this face, I actually created it using Illustrator, creating a nice crunchy object but basing it on an existing pattern. I imported it into Designer, scaled it down, and blurred it. I also added the inverse grayscale of the core as an output for this custom core node. 
This finalizes all the outputs of our custom node. Now back to the main graph. Around the core, we see these small tiny fibers radiating from it. It's at this point we're going to use our custom node, so I dragged a line from the core mask output to where we're generating these fibers. An interesting way of creating these fibers is to start with an anisotropic noise and morph it using a shape mapper. Adjust it with the levels to form the fibers. Now, here, we make use of the core node and blend it with the fibers using blend mode multiply. We use this as a mask with a light green color and blend it back to our color map. From this, we can see the tiny fibers radiating from the core. Now we're going to add the core. We start by creating the texture of the core surface. It's basically a clouds 3 blended with a dirt 3 with the intention of blending this result with the core mask from our custom core node. Around the edges of the core, there's a lot of rough textures. So to create this, I used an edge detect node to isolate the edge of the core and then adjusted the sharpness and brightness to control the strength. It's used as a mask with a Gaussian Spots 2 node, and when blended, it adds many dots along the edge of the core. Here, I wanted to add another level of detail, so I blended the entire result with another Gaussian Spots 2. The output of this is used as a mask when adding the core to the color map. We're going to make use of the seed nodes mask and core mask from our custom node here. Drag them all the way to where our core color nodes are. The seed nodes mask is used when we add our nodes to our core, and the core mask is used when we merge the core to our main color map. I started coloring the core texture. It's basically a Perlin noise used as a mask to blend an off-white color with a light green gradient map node. This gradient is basically a light green color with dark green patches. Once this is all blended together, we can really see the kiwi form start taking shape. It's at this point I started to build the normal map. First, I took the inverse of the core mask to use as a blend between what we have now, the flesh texture, and the seed crevices. This allows me to keep the seed crevices, but keep the fleshy texture for the core, at least for now. I then subtracted out most of the core, but using a transformation to keep a slight outline of the core there. The core actually has subtle bumps on its surface, which were created by blurring a Gaussian noise and blending it back to what we have so far. It might seem strange to subtract the core bumps only to add them back in, but that's what I ended up doing. There's many ways to do this, but this is the result you're looking for. Next, I wanted to create these lines that extend out from the core in between the seed crevices. This shape is a very narrow paraboloid with a blurred tip. A splatter circle node is used to radiate these lines out from the core with specific values so that they are in between the dark seed crevices. I'm scrolling through the splatter circular node if you want to use my values. Afterwards, we modify the shape by blending in more noises and modify the sharpness with a blur and levels. Because the circle splatter node radiates from a middle point, I had to subtract out the core shape. Blurring of the tips allows these lines to dissolve into the flesh rather than have a harsh ending. It uses a non-uniform blur node and a sphere as the blur map. This makes the outside tips of the lines blurred. We're going to reuse the core color for these lines. However, we do a blend with another uniform off-white color so that the lines are more white the further away from the core. Use the output from the non-uniform blur as the mask in the final blend. We do want the lines to affect our normal map. So going back to the lines grayscale, we take the output of this levels here and blend it back using blend mode add. Previously, we added little veins that protrude from the core, but we also see larger ones that are more defined, so we want to add these as well. I used the gradient linear 3 to create the stems, and then a splatter circular node. To make them nice and curvy, I warped the splatter result with a Perlin noise, and blended that with another noise to break up the thickness. One interesting thing we do here is to subtract the seeds from the stems. This adds this interesting effect that if a stem reaches a seed, the stem will end there, creating this effect that the stem and seeds are connected. 
Since we want the stems to protrude from the core, we have to subtract the core using our core mask. Most of the stem color is yellowish, but we want the tips to be red, so that's what we're doing here. Now we're off to adding our final details, the seeds. Of all the seed types, the surface seeds have the greatest effect on the normal map. To add some texture to the seeds themselves so they're not perfectly smooth, I first blend it with a Gaussian noise and then blurred it with a clouds one. Since the surface seeds stick out of the flesh, they have to be part of our normal map. We first need to subtract out the seeds because we don't want any of the previous textures to affect it and then add the seeds back using the seed details we created below. Now to add the seeds to our color map, I created a textured brown gradient map and then added subtle light brown spots using the seed mask. Use this mask again when we blend the brown color to our color map to add the seeds to our kiwi. This is the result I get. It's starting to look pretty good. With the semi-buried seeds, we do basically the same thing. We're using the same colors as the surface seeds. We're just adding some variations of seeds. These seeds are below the surface and do not affect the normal map. We're going to add the fully buried seeds. These are seeds so far below the surface, so much that they vary in color from seed to seed. They use the same brown tones, but the light brown spots are ever so faint. I mix in a vibrant green to further sell the visuals of the seeds being underneath a surface and buried in a material that is not a uniform opaqueness. Also, I blended the buried seed mask with the noise. This also sells the effect that the kiwi flesh is non-uniform. These seeds are so far below the surface, they have no effect on the normal map. Finally, we add the seeds just below the surface. Start by dragging this last output on our core seed node all the way to the end. A levels node is used to control their color intensity, i.e. how close to the surface they appear. Since we do want these seeds to add some bumps, I blend in our just below the surface seed mask to create very subtle bumps to our existing normal map. If we take a close look, we can see these seeds just pressing against the surface of the kiwi. The last thing we need to do is create the roughness map. I kept it simple just by adjusting the levels of the grayscale used for the normal, making it more smooth or wet looking, and blending it with the core grayscale using blend mode add to control the smoothness of the core separately from the rest of the kiwi. The metallic and ambient occlusion maps can be kept black and white respectively. Regarding the height map, the surface bumps on a kiwi are very subtle especially at the distances required for most renders, so I never really needed a height map. However, if you are taking a really close-up render, you could make use of a height map to emphasize the bumps generated by the seeds and seed crevice. And that's it, we're at the end. To summarize, we started with the base texture, and then focused on the base color. From there, we added additional textures and added fibers to give a sense of depth. Buried seeds were added, followed by a dark green core. Then we worked on building the details around the core, that is, the small veins and fibers. Then the core was layered on top, followed by the white lines dividing the seeds, and the stems growing out of the base of the seeds. The last few steps are where we added the actual seeds. We introduced several kinds, seeds on the surface, seeds partially buried, and seeds fully buried within the flesh. Finally, we tweak the roughness, and that's it. Looking back, it's definitely not a simple graph, but it was fun making it. It incorporates lots of nice details, and it looks great in renders. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you get some interesting ideas for your projects. Thanks for watching.